Good morning, folks. Quick chip break, but some good stuff here. So today is Thursday. Uh, Haas is coming to set up our fifth axis. So I am super excited to get this thing uh, on the machine and see what we can do with it. Uh, both positional work, but also running true fourth and fifth axis tool pass. We made a little riser plate to mount the Raptor vise onto that trunnion. And it's kind of funny. We uh, we filmed a video making the adapter plate and it was probably the worst video I've done maybe ever. It seemed like everything went wrong and it's all basically all my fault. So I haven't looked at the footage, but I, it's funny. My thought was to just ditch the footage, but you know, I've never done that because I feel like that's part of the channel is look, we make mistakes, we goof, um, it, it happens. So I, I struggle because there's something to be said for putting out videos that make it look, you know, make it look like we are um, leading by a good example, but yeah, we'll see. Um, so that's exciting. Um, tomorrow, well here, I'll come back to that because I've got some homework for you guys. Today I want to talk about buying you, I'm sorry, used equipment. So we drove down to Kentucky yesterday and picked this thing up and I am excited. So what is it? It is a surface grinder. Surface grinding is a way to get stuff really, really flat, far flatter than machining. Um, it's an Okamoto, and you know, it's funny, there's something about the grinding world, and I'm not an expert, but unlike machining, where there's kind of opinions on what machines are best and what styles are best and so forth, Okamoto just seems to be the best for grinders. Um, maybe I'm wrong on that, but all the people I've talked to, it's kind of a standout in its class. So. I had been casually looking for one of these and I had actually uh, reached out to our distributor um, who deals in these new because I just wanted to get smart on them. So it's funny because if you remember from the IMTS video when we uh, shot some footage on the Samsung Lays, so that's, they're distributed by a company called Reynolds Machinery. I got to know the guy Parker from Reynolds Machinery who happens to also be the Okamoto dealer and I said, Parker, what, what's the deal with Okamoto grinders? I have no idea what they would cost new, what's the what are the options, what are the specs, like I just, I need to get smart on it. That was maybe a month ago. Um, and one of the big questions I have is can you grind aluminum or how do you grind aluminum? Because nobody, everyone talks about grinding steel or tool steel, but not aluminum. Long story short, I kind of set up an eBay search, Craigslist, just kind of poking around, and this came up. So my big takeaway um, for you guys from a chip break standpoint is the mentality behind buying a used machine and how, frankly, I think it's a pretty difficult process. And here's why. You've got to balance absorbing information from others, but making your own decision. So I spent 10 years in New York City. I, I have this kind of attitude of everyone's out to screw you. Um, I, and I don't know why I have that. I think it's because that's kind of a thing in New York, but I, you know, it, 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 in a less cynical tone, it's kind of like, what is the motivation of the seller? Why are they disposing of this machine? Why do they no longer want it? Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes it's a use it or lose it budget situation where they're just like, hey, I got to buy a new machine. I got to get this one out of here. Somebody buy it. On this one, the guy bought it. Uh, what he told me, at least, um, was that they bought it. They had it for it used. It's a 1981 machine. They had it for six months. They never really used it and they realize they need something bigger, brighter, shinier, newer to impress their customers that walk through their shop. Now, look, I don't really know this guy. I don't have a reason to, to doubt him, but it doesn't necessarily pass this, the, just kind of, well, why'd you buy it in the first place? Um, it worked, I got a chance to see it under power, and to me, the price was great. And that's the difficult thing is, it's kind of like, what is a price that you love? Because most of the time, you wanna buy something and you wanna feel good. You wanna be able to tell your friends and people, hey, I got a great deal. Um, so I talked to a buddy, uh, I won't name names, but a buddy who owns a similar size grinder, but a sort of a knockoff brand and what he paid for it. And he was kind of like, oh my God, you know, I'd much rather for a couple extra grand have an Okamoto. Holy cow, no brainer. But then I talked to Parker, the guy at the dealership. And of course he, he would probably prefer to sell a brand new one, but that's literally six to eight times the price. And he was saying, you know, that price seems a little rich, a little high. Um, but that's part of entrepreneurship, folks. That's part of being successful is building a team of people that you can know and trust in. Um, you know, that's the reason I started this YouTube channel was I had no idea what I was doing. And I thought, if I'm going to ask help of other people, I got to give something back. So uh, it's a two-way street. And so being able to text people and say, hey, does this make sense? 
that's huge. So, but it's kind of funny. I had one guy kind of saying, hey, that is a no-brainer screaming deal. Oh, my God. And the other guy saying, yeah, you know, you probably shouldn't pay that much for it. You have to make your own decision at the end of the day. Bring those facts in. Make your own decision. Um, I paid, I'll just tell you, I paid 10 grand for this thing. Um, it was on eBay. The buy it now was 15 grand. 15 grand to me was a no-brainer, bad, too much money. Um, I really wanted to pay a eight and a half. Why? Just mentally. Um, the, uh, but I knew it was, um, I knew it looked aesthetically in good condition. It has the magnetic chuck on it. That is very expensive. Um, and I kind of thought, okay, the good news is I know Parker. I know the guys at Reynolds Machinery. They um, confirmed that they do still service these machines. So I thought, worst case, I'll buy this thing. Um, it's only four hours away, so Jared and I picked it up ourselves. And worst case, I will huck it, uh, sell it for, I don't know, seven or eight grand, I assume, just you know because there's something wrong with it that I can't, doesn't make it a good fit. That's kind of my worst case downside scenario. That's terrible, but it's not, you know, it doesn't cause you to file bankruptcy. The other sort of worst case scenario is I got to put like five grand into it. But even then, let's say I've got to redo the bearings and there's some electronic problem with the magnetic chuck and all that, and it costs me five grand. That's a lot more than I want to spend, but then I got a grinder that's almost new for, again, 20% uh, of the price of a new one. And uh, the good thing about grinders and stuff like this is they aren't CNC machines where you've got controller upgrades and circuit boards and modern technology that's really changed. Um, I'm pretty comfortable. Uh, again, I could, I'm, I'm not an expert, but pretty comfortable that this thing can make great parts despite its age, uh, so long as we just check everything out, so forth. So that's my little shtick on buying used equipment. Um, your homework is, I wanna talk about 2016, and I wanna talk about 2017 and, and the goals. And I set up, at the beginning of the year, I'm not a huge goal person in the sense of, I don't, I, I don't, don't dwell on it. I spend my day making parts and front of my business, but it is good to think about. So rather than talk about it right now, I want you guys to reflect on your 2016 and be honest with yourself. What went well, what didn't go well, and then let's talk about 2017 and split your goals into both sort of numerical goals, maybe their revenue, maybe their products, maybe it's something else that you can very um, quali uh, quantitatively measure, but then also the qualitative goals. What's gonna make you happy? What's gonna make you feel like what you're doing is a success and that it, it furthers your passion. And it's funny, uh, I watched Rob Lockwood's video on really good um, three axis tool pads the other day, a card here because this is uh, a phenomenal video. And <laughs> Rob sort of said, if you take any pride in your work, you'll do this. He was talking about tool pads that are automatically generated by some of the automatic CNC machine shops where you submit a part online and they just turn it out without a human ever touching it versus really going in and artistically um, applying a very, very good tool path. And he talked about having pride in your work and it really rekindled that, like really take pride in your work. So think about that folks for what you wanna do for 2017, whether this is just a hobby, whether it's a side business, whether it's your full-time business, and then we'll film a chip break tomorrow and uh, or Saturday and we'll talk about what went great for us in 16, what didn't go well for us, and what I'm hoping to do in 2017. So with that folks, take care, see you soon.